If your mission takes you to a typical enemy target area, what defenses can you expect to find? Well, we know from our intelligence reports that the enemy has interceptor aircraft, all weather as well as day types, that he has missiles, surface to air and air to air, and that he has anti-aircraft guns. We also know that these weapons are parts of integrated automatic systems controlled by various types of radars. Among them are early warning radars operating at low frequencies. He has GCI radars, ground control intercept, for acquiring and tracking us and for controlling his interceptors. And he has fire control radars for controlling his missiles and guns. Then there is a radio communication net that ties the complex together and transmits information and orders to the interceptors. How will you get through to the prime target and deliver the weapon? Can you deliver a second one? And how will you get out? How can you increase your chances of survival? First, of course, is to choose a route that minimizes the risk and, if possible, take the low road down where the ground-based radars are less efficient. And use electronic countermeasures. For example, you might jam the enemy's radars with the brute force method. One drawback, however, is that such a signal reveals your position. Also, it could provide a perfect path for homing missiles. It paints false returns, covering a narrow angle during the early approach, then progressively increasing it, eventually covering the entire circle. The radar operator knows he is being deceived, but you are a needle in a haystack to him. Let's assume that you are within his range. Although energy is transmitted by all lobes, for clarity we will show only the radiation in the direction of the aircraft. When the radar transmits a pulse, your skin return appears on his PPI scope. Your ALQ-35 receives each pulse greatly amplifies it, and after a short delay, repeats the signal, that is, transmits it back to the radar. As a result, a false target appears on his scope. It is farther out than the skin return because it was received later due to the delay. The succeeding pulses are repeated, but with random delay times, so that many false targets appear on the scope. Some of these appear at shorter ranges because they have been delayed long enough so that each appears to be the echo of a succeeding pulse. The set's hardware comprises four major components. The radio frequency tuner, the pulse generator, the transmitter, and the control. A receiving and a transmitting antenna are used with the set. The tuner contains the receiver portion of the set. It operates in selected sections of the spectrum between 2,000 and 4,000 megacycles. The tuner triggers the pulse generator, which in turn generates a randomly delayed pulse to the transmitter for amplification and transmission as a false target signal. An important feature of this and the other DECM equipment is the use of traveling wave tubes. Operating wide open as to frequency, they accommodate all signals throughout the band without tuning. The transmitter output tube furnishes a peak pulse power of about one kilowatt. The control is used to set the modes of operation. Turning the switch to standby warms up the equipment with the light indicating readiness. In receive, the set will operate only to receive radar pulses. When the light goes on, 
It indicates that your aircraft is being illuminated by a radar. The repeat mode puts the transmitter into operation. It operates only during the time a radar signal is being received. The set covers the 100 to 210 megacycle portion of the VHF band of radio frequencies. GCI, Ground Control Intercept Communications, are in the form of frequency modulated CW for voice and data link signals for data transmission. These are the enemy communication signals to be disrupted without wasting countermeasure energy on other VHF signals such as TV, ground controlled approach, amateur, marker beacon, carrier controlled approach, and FM broadcasting. The ALQ-55 can distinguish one type of signal from another by means of identification circuits with a memory device storing the data. In operation, the set scans the spectrum, searching for signals. When signals are detected, the receiver evaluates them. If a particular signal is classified as a threat, the set transmits an appropriate jamming signal on that frequency. The transmitter operates only during signal reception. Since the jamming signal is not continuous, the enemy cannot use it to detect you or home on you. At least six signals can be handled simultaneously, and as many as 20 could be jammed with a reasonable degree of effectiveness depending on their interrelationship. The major components are the receiver modulator, a multi-channel device that employs six receivers that operate simultaneously and in parallel, the receiver power supply, the transmitter with an average output power of 500 watts and a peak of 1,000 watts, the transmitter power supply, and the control. The system uses a single omnidirectional antenna with a duplexer. The components are mounted on a shock-protected rack the receiver modulator and its power supply, the transmitter and its power supply, and the control. The control resembles that used with the ALQ-35. A self-test button is provided. Standby is the warm-up setting. Receiver is used for listen and transmission. The transmitter is turned on by a separate guarded switch. An override setting permits battle short operation in an emergency when it may be necessary to override all thermal and electrical safety devices in the set.